Hey guys, welcome to another WYS by Adam Lash. Today I'm going to be talking about a very special product that it's something that I usually don't review because I'm not into the culinary arts. I've never done anything about cooking before. But it's something that my friend has recommended so many times. So I decided I'd give it a shot and try it. I myself don't cook at all. I mean, I, I can barely fix myself a sandwich. I think I can only make eggs. That's, that's the only thing I can do. But my friend told me that once I start using the Instant Pot, and I have the Duo Plus model here, which I'm gonna be reviewing, unboxing, and reviewing as well. He said that you just gotta dump your ingredients in, and this thing is gonna cook your food through pressurized cooking. He told me that it's gonna be just like magic. And I'm gonna be reviewing this product and I'm gonna be telling you all about it from my perspective as a man who does not cook much. And I just wanna know if this thing is actually real. Is it true that you just dump in the stuff and that's it? We're gonna find out. And I'm also excited because I'm gonna be cooking my very first pasta. I've never cooked pasta or spaghetti in my life. And this is gonna be the first time I'm gonna do it. And with the help of the Instant Pot, I hope it's going to be easy. So let's find out if I can do it. Uh. All right, let's do this. Let's go ahead and unbox this beautiful pressure cooker and let's see if it actually works. Okay, we've got a manual here, some instructions. Nice, that's the multi-use pressure cooker, safety, maintenance, and warranty. All right, that's the safety. Nice, we got a recipe booklet. Check this out. Okay, let's see the table of contents. Got starters, sides, mains, and desserts. These are the different recipes we got here. That's the getting started guide. All right, I don't know anything about this, so let's see. We're gonna be talking about these things, initial test run. So we got to do these things first. So let's go ahead and see how this thing looks like. Oh, that's the power cord. Okay, this thing's pretty heavy. And there it is. Wow, this thing is pretty big, man. Check this out. That's pretty cool, man. Oh, there's a warning sign here. Let's see what the warning sign says. Use only the pressure cooking lid provided with the included cooker base. Fine, I'm not gonna use any other lid. Don't worry about that. And this is the quick release button. Steam release is automatically set to the ceiling position when the lid is closed. Hot steam from steam release valve can cause burns. Do not place hand, face, or unprotected skin over the steam release valve while the cooker is still in operation. Okay, I will not do that. Read the warning cards and warning stickers. Remove all packaging materials. Okay, don't place your... F I'm not gonna place my hands or face. Okay, fine. What else is there? Aha! Uh -huh. I guess this is the sealant. The ceiling ring and whatever you want to call this we got a nice tray here that's pretty nice look at that and this is the pot check that out the instant pot wow that's pretty cool man oh yeah and it's got a it's got a marker here that's the maximum amount that you can fill this thing up with. That's half, that's two thirds. It's not advisable to fill it more than that. That's pretty neat. I'm gonna put this thing here. Okay, what else is there? Warning, do not leave food or foreign objects on the heating element. Always ensure the heating element is free from grease and debris before cooking. For best results, use authorized Instant Brands Inner Pot for cooking. Remove card before use, okay. Now let's see how this thing looks like from the inside. So that's the heating element. Check out how many options this thing has. Wow, kind of looks intimidating to be honest. I hope these things are going to be uh, useful. Not like the microwave buttons, which are mostly not that useful. So we've got pressure cook, soup and broth, meat and stew, cake. This thing can make cake. <laughs> 
eggs, slow cook, saute, pressure level, keep warm, delay start, rice, bean, grain, porridge, oatmeal, steam, sterilize. Oh, you can also sterilize this thing. Yogurt. Man, this is actually exciting. I'm trying to figure this out with you guys step by step. <laughs> That's pretty cool. All right, I'm going to plug this thing in. And yep, I just heard that beep. Huh. It says it's off. Open. Grip handle and turn lid counterclockwise until this is on lid is aligned with okay indicator on the rim of cooker base. Lift lid up and off of cooker base. Always check lid for damage prior to cooking. All right. Oh my God, how do you? One eternity later. Ah, nice. <laughs> this thing made a sound. All right. Cool. <laughs> this thing actually will play a jingle when the lid is opened and closed. So it says closed grip panel and align this. Okay, so that it's aligned right now with the indicator on rim of cooker base. Okay. Yeah, there's the indicator. You can see that right there. There is the indicator. That means it's closed. All right, if you want to open it, as you can see, it says open this way. So that's how you open it. And I like this jingle, man. It, it always plays a jingle when the lid is open and closed. <laughs> la la la. I could be doing this all day, man. It's fun. So it says check the ceiling ring and ceiling ring rack. Okay. And here is the ceiling ring. It looks secure to me because it says here that you need to inspect the ceiling ring rack and it should be centered in the lid in an even height all the way around it. Yeah. It is centered. I think it's fine. The next step would be to remove and install the float valve. The float valve has two positions. It pops up to indicate that the cooker is pressurized. This is the float valve. It says here that this is the pressurized position. This will pop up in the pressurized position. And if it's not pressurized, if it's depressurized like this, it's going to go down. So remove one finger on the flat top of float valve. Turn lid over. Detach silicone cap from bottom side of float valve. Remove float valve from top of lid. Do not discard float valve or silicone cap. Remove and install float valve. Okay, so I have to do this right now. The float valve and silicone cap must be installed before use to seal and pressurized steam. Yeah, I think this is done already. This has been installed already. It's done. I don't have to do anything. All right, so what's the next step? Come on, I want to cook. I'm getting hungry here, man. Too many steps in this. I think this is one of the disadvantages for newcomers like me. Remove and install anti-block shield. Grip lid and press firmly against side of anti-block shield, pressing towards side of lid and up until it pops off the prongs underneath. Anti-block shield prevents food particles from coming up through the steam release valve, assisting with pressure regulation. I don't think I have to do that right now. I'm okay. I think the step is done. Remove pull steam assembly valve up and off steam release pipe. Steam release valve must be installed before use and cleaned after each use. Place steam release valve on steam release pipe and press down. Fits loosely when installed properly but will remain in place when the lid is turned over. Okay. So that's how it looks like. Huh. This thing came off. <laughs> so you can pull it and you can push it back in. I'm getting hungry. What's the next step? Let's just wash this thing. Finally. Okay, we got that, man. We just have to wash it. So let's go ahead, guys, and wash the inner pot. So now I'm going to go ahead and wash the inner pot. We can't use it without washing it for the first time. So here we go. I
All right, so I washed the inner pot. It is squeaky clean. Now we are ready to cook the pasta. Let's do this, man. <laughs> Wait a minute, we got one more step here, which is to install the condensation collector. Install on back of the cooker base, align grooves on condensation collector over tabs, and push condensation collector into place. Uh huh. So the condensation collector is this part right here. There it is. Found it. Okay, but how does this thing go in? Hmm. Simple as that. Great. So the condensation collector has been installed. Please tell me this is it. Okay, so these are the venting methods. There are two venting methods here. When closing the lid, the quick release button will automatically reset to the popped up seal position. It's going to be reset to this position. That's vent. Over here, once you press it, once you press that, that is venting and if it's in an upright position that's seal okay what else is there natural release nr and quick release so there are two types of releases nr and qr leave the steam release in the seal position up the cooker dissipates heat so pressure releases naturally over time depressurization time will vary based upon volume of food and liquid it may take 10 to 40 minutes or longer quick release press quick release button down until it clicks when depressed, a continuous stream of steam will be released through the steam valve until the float valve drops into the lid. If spatter occurs, flick quick release button to reset it to the seal position and try again after a few minutes. If spatter continues, I hope it's not going to be any spatter, use NR to vent remaining pressure. We got to do an initial test run. Now let's, let's go ahead and add some water. I'm going to put the inner pot back here and I am going to add three cups of water. One, two, and finally three. Insert inner pot into cooker base, secure power cord to base power socket. Yeah, the power cord is secure. Display indicates off. Yeah, it says it's off. Align this with the lid. Yeah, let's go ahead and align it. Yeah, I'm becoming professional with this thing. <laughs> It's aligned. Lower lid into track, then turn lid clockwise until the jingle sounds. Yeah, we got the jingle sound. Steam release automatically resets to seal position. Select smart program pressure cook. Pressure cook, there it is. Use the plus minus keys to adjust cooking. Wait a minute. To five minutes. Good, it's gonna go down. We need five minutes. Five minutes. The Instant Pot will save any customization made to cooking time. All right. After 10 seconds, display indicates on and cooker begins preheating. I think it's on. Float valve rises when cooker has pressurized. Once pressurized, cooking begins and display changes from on to cook time countdown. When the smart program completes, cooker begins keep warm or display indicates end. The keep warm button is on. All right, while this thing works, let's find out more about these controls. Cancel, press to stop the smart program at any time. The cooker goes back to standby and displays off. We're not gonna do that. Delay start, where's delay start? Delay start, what does that do? Postpone cooking up to 24 hours. Select a smart program and if desired, adjust the cook time. Then press delay start to turn the setting on. Use the plus minus keys to adjust the number of hours before cooking will begin. I don't think we need that. I want to know what that is. Keep warm. Now keep warm setting is on by default on all smart programs except saute and yogurt. One smart program is selected, press keep warm to turn the setting off. Something is definitely going on. This thing says do not touch and I kind of like, yeah, it's pretty hot. It's really, really hot. Don't touch this thing. I saw some steam coming out of that. Man, it's kind of intimidating to use this pressurized cooker. I hope I know what I'm doing. It says that the float valve rises when the cooker has pressurized. Once pressurized, cooking begins and display changes from on to the, to the cook time countdown. Oh, there it is. Man, this is so exciting but so intimidating at the same time. Now it says here, when the smart program completes, cooker begins keep warm or display indicates end. 
Now all I gotta do is wait for this thing to end. Oh man, this is exciting. <laughs> you wanna try to blow off some steam, literally? <laughs> okay, now what's going on? Uh, I have to press. What? <laughs> Huh, I have to keep pressing it. So that is how this thing is going to depressurize. It's kind of scary, man. Please don't blow up on me. All right. It calmed down. That's, that's, you see, that's what happens when you follow the instructions down to the letter. Float valve will drop when pressure has been fully released. Ah, it dropped. That's true. Look at that, man. It just dropped. Great. To open, turn the lid counterclockwise until a jingle sounds. Discard water and dry inner pot. Start cooking, yes! So let's do this, man. Wow. And there goes my cooking, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so the test run has been successful. It is a success, and I like the way this thing latches onto this. So the condensation there, it, I mean, they thought about everything. This is really cool, man. I'm excited because right now, this is the moment of truth. I'm gonna go ahead and test my cooking skills. So let's open this spaghetti. Whoa, I've, okay. Just to be clear here, I've never cooked spaghetti in my life or anything else for that matter. So let me take, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cook all of it. I'm just gonna cook half of it. And I saw a video on YouTube and the chef was saying, use thirds. So I'm gonna be using thirds. So take the dried pasta noodles and use thirds. Place them in a crisscross position because you cannot stir the pasta with the instant pot. Okay, so I'm doing that right now. Hmm, no, I think I should add all of it. I've added my noodles now, and I'm gonna add a little bit of more water. So I'm going to add just a little bit of more water. And now it's time to add the sauce. So let's go ahead and add the sauce. Mmm, smells good. I'm gonna dump it in. <laughs> wow, I can't believe I'm cooking, man. This is gonna be very interesting. So it has to be four minutes. Pressure cook. Let's set this thing to four minutes. There you go. And it should start automatically. Come on, Instant Pot, show me what you got. On! Here we go, baby. All right, so we're gonna wait for this thing to cook. So here's a quick observation that I've had so far. This thing has been blowing off some steam. It takes a little bit of time, a little bit, actually, I think significant time for this thing to be ready. It's been more than like 10 minutes right now and it's still in the on position, even though I, set this thing to four minutes. So the Instant Pot needs time to prepare itself, I guess. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Other people said that you can use the saute mode to warm it up, but I've already done the uh, the initial testing and the Instant Pot was already hot. I don't know why it's taking that much time. I think it's been about 10 minutes right now and it's still getting ready, trying to pressurize. Okay, so now it pressurized. The countdown timer has begun and you can see that the valve went up. When the valve rises, that means it's pressurized. So one minute remaining now, and the chef said in her video to leave this thing for another 10 minutes after it's done. It will allow it to naturally release the pressure and this will help cook the pasta even more. The chef said that that also helps with uh, uh, settling down any kind of uh, vapor, any kind of, uh, wow, this thing's very hot, don't touch this. Any kind of vapor that might have come here at the top so that it will settle down. It's done. 
Okay. One eternity later. Oh yeah, she was right. Did you see that? <laughs> it was spewing out stuff. That thing was spewing out stuff. Did you see that? If I do it again, I think she was right about that because if I do the quick release, you can see that this thing's going to spew out stuff. Whoa. Ouch. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Do not touch this cover at all. Whew. The timer's going up, not down. All right, so now it has been more than 10 minutes, actually 11 minutes, and this thing still did not depressurize. I've been trying to pressurize it manually through the quick release and being very gentle. It's not spewing things out like before. I'm not sure why the natural release option is not working. Shouldn't it naturally release the pressure? I don't know what's going on. Anyway, here I am, releasing the pressure slowly. It is not exactly four minutes, so it takes 10 minutes to heat this up, four minutes to cook this, and another 10 minutes for this thing to depressurize, but I don't know why it's taking more time, and it says 12 minutes now. Check that out, yeah! <laughs> so the valve finally went down, and there's no more pressure. That means it's now safe to open it. That was 15 minutes. So this is the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go ahead and open this. Okay. Whoa. Nice. I got my prongs right here and I'm going to see if this thing has cooked properly. Okay, I can tell from, from a glance that the top part was not properly cooked. Some of the noodles have not been properly cooked, but the rest, yeah, the ones at the bottom have been properly cooked. Maybe the way I set them was, I don't know, I did something wrong, I think. But anyway, <laughs> Not bad for my first try. <laughs> so it did not properly cook all of the noodles. Uh, I'm not sure why. But the ones at the bottom have been properly cooked. Before I put the food on the plate, I want to point out that one of the advantages of having an instant pot is that because it has deep sides like this, it's really nice because if you use a traditional stove like this, you are bound to have oil or food go all over the place and you're going to have to clean this constantly. With the Instant Pot, that is no longer a problem. So let's go ahead and taste this thing, man. This is my first pasta, ladies and gentlemen. I made this all by myself. Such an accomplishment. <laughs> and there it is. All right, so here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna go ahead and try my food. Let's see if it's gonna taste good. And here's the pasta. Let's see if it's gonna taste good. Hmm. 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 It's pretty good. I like it. I think I made a little mistake. I didn't add enough water because some, just a small part of the pasta was not properly cooked at the top. I think because I didn't add enough water, but it's really nice. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was the Instant Pot. I think it's a really great device. My take on this, yeah, I'm impressed. You can easily cook, but it's a little bit intimidating. If you don't know what you're doing, you might actually get hurt. So for example, don't touch the lid. It's really hot. Be careful when you're uh, letting that thing, when you're venting it, don't put your hand next to the steam. You can also get hurt. The natural release was a little bit intimidating. I don't know why it was taking too much time. And if you try the, the quick release, it's also um, a little bit problematic because sometimes it might spew stuff. But I'm sure there are, there, there are workarounds for that. But apart from that, I think the Instant Pot is a really great device. I think it's a must-have in every man's kitchen, actually. 
because you can cook a lot of things with this thing. And I can't wait to cook more stuff. Can't believe I just said that. You know what? I never thought I'm going to say this. Me cooking. Wow. Thanks for watching this video. If you like this video, give it a like. And if you really like this video, subscribe to my channel. Have a great day.